they can just write off it, mm. write off the cost, because probably all, you know, living in a commune and using moss for beds or something. But anyway, yes. right. Well, on. Deputy Labour leader Angela Rayner has been criticised for saying police should shoot terrorists first and ask questions second. Rayner admitted she was quite hardline on crime, also stating that I want you to beat down the door of the criminals and sort them out and antagonise them. Well, joining us now for more on this is Sam Armstrong, Communications Director at the Henry Jackson Society Security Think Tank. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Sam. I mean, what do you make of uh, Angela Rayner's comments? I mean, is this uh, Labour Party trying to show that they're tough on crime or, or, or is this actually just empty words? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, the Labour Party have realised that the British public aren't going to take a kind of uh, hug a criminal type approach to, uh, to justice and, and, and continue to vote for it. I'm in the rare position of quite enjoying what Angela Rayner said. I, I think it, she's absolutely right. Of course, we should not ask questions. The police should ask as many questions as they've got time to do. But they've come an awful long way since uh, Jeremy Corbyn, who, let's not forget, was a leader that Angela Rayner very happily served, was saying that if I'm prime minister, I would have police officers never shoot terrorists. Well, that's true, actually, isn't it? And I can't help but feel like now, like Labour are on a little bit of a law and order march, aren't they? We've seen what Sadiq Khan is trying to do, uh, well, has done really, with Cressida Dick. What I thought was fascinating about that, actually, was the fact that the thing that almost really brought her down was kind of misogynistic text. It wasn't really the fact that she's not been able to get to grips with this rampant knife crime epidemic that we've had or a whole host of other massive, massive crime-related issues that we've had. It was, it was misogynistic text, but you know, obviously they're still awful, don't get me wrong. But what do you think about the idea then that, that actually it's deemed controversial to shoot a terrorist first and ask them questions later? I mean, isn't that kind of what most people would want? Yeah, there's been this furious reaction from uh, a, a few lawyers on Twitter in particular who've said, oh, this is ridiculous. But look, you know, there is not space for due process when you're confronted by a terrorist. Were well, the police officers who had just seen Khalid Massoud mow down pedestrians across Westminster Bridge, run through the gates of the Houses of Parliament, stab a police officer charging towards Parliament, were they meant to say, uh, what are you doing here, Mr. Massoud? Uh, please don't stab anyone before they shot him. No, of course not. Sometimes the police police need to act. But I think you're right to bring up, of course, um, where the Labour Party are getting involved on, on, on these police officers uh, in Charing Cross. I, I mean, look, <clears throat> people of minority backgrounds in this country face crime every day. Uh, and uh, you would think that a, a Labour Party that was taking their values, their interests seriously, would be wanting to do more to tackle uh, them getting stabbed and killed rather than the fact that um, a few police officers are talking unto themselves in, in a way that absolutely they shouldn't be doing. But, you know, is that the scandal or, or is, as you say, the scandal that knife crime, burglary uh, is rampant through London and shows no sign of abating? But on that uh, point about, you know, whether or not this is actually the uh, uh, appropriate Response. I mean, aren't we meant to be moving towards a more civilised society that we're not engaging in kind of extra judicial killings? And regardless of how heinous someone's crime is, we make sure that um, the first thing that we think about is to ensure that there is due process and that they are held accountable in a court of law. And actually, Angela Rayner's comments, some might argue, are almost kind of trivialising the seriousness of, of actually taking a life, regardless of the context. Well, look, if a terrorist had surrendered and was sitting there on the floor, I, I wouldn't support a police officer shooting him. Of course I wouldn't. And indeed, they don't. That's why um, a number of terrorists in recent years have been arrested and imprisoned for very extended periods of time. But I'm afraid as much as we might all wish to live in a world in which uh, everybody can be brought to justice and go through the processes, there are some people who have checked out from that. There are some people who will kill, maim and injure until such a time that they are stopped. And the sad reality is, whether they're in uh, Iraq or Syria or over here, there are times when our government, which has a fundamental obligation to keep us safe, has no choice but to take uh, the minimum possible force, but in that case, lethal force, to stop them. Yeah. I mean, we've had some people uh, in our views already commenting on the fact that there is the infamous picture of uh, Angela Rayner yes. and, and Keir Starmer taking the knee. And yes. actually, many people do associate uh, organisations like Black Lives Matter with um, a lot of rioting that happened in America, burning down of, of cities and cars and, and not necessarily and defunding 
the police actually are not yeah. necessarily associated yeah. with you know <laughs> hard, hard line on crime. So it might be a bit contradictory. I want, you to, I want you to go around to their house, right, and bring them swift justice, but do it for free. What, what, what do you make of that? That it's a bit contradictory in terms of Angela Rayner's messaging. Yeah, I think it is uh, contradictory. It's certainly very different to what she was saying under the last leader. It's different to what she's been saying uh, under this leader. I, I think the Labour Party have realised, probably they've uh, taken the time to poll or ask the public what do they think on crime, that the, the public want it, want it dealing with. And, and if I was to be a, a voter maybe in the red wall that was a little bit suspicious of, hmm, have they really changed? What I might ask for is, well, Ms Rayner, what are you going to do differently to what's being done. How are you going to toughen on crime? It's all well and good you saying you support this or you would uh, tolerate this or, or whatever, but are you going to give the police more powers? Uh, are, are you going to start supporting them? Are you going to start backing them in ways that functional, physical ways that they haven't been doing uh, or haven't been being supported? Or are you still going to be on them? Because I think, let's be clear, uh, Angela Rayner might to many police officers seem like the type of politician who's more likely to call for an inquiry into them using force of any type that, than she is to be the one that backs them. Yes, I, I can't help but, uh, but agree with that. Sam Armstrong, thank you very much. Communications Director at the Henry Jackson Security Think Tank. So, yes, it's, I mean, I might as well throw this one open to people. We've already had quite a few emails coming in about this. And uh, we've had Paul, for example. He'd shoot first, ask questions later when it comes to terrorism, hopefully not just in general, Paul. Um, and uh, it says, I'm an ex-British soldier, and a soldier's way is, is to stop. Yeah, I mean, I, I do understand that sentiment, but there does seem something very unsatisfying, I mean, to me, when it comes to just uh, killing a terrorist uh, on site. I mean, I've seen, we've seen some of these horrendous terrorist attacks. I mean, Charlie Hebdo is one that's oh. really stuck with me for uh, really quite palpably yeah, yeah, for, for years. And you just think um, these people should be held to account and be to face the oh, horrendous... Oh, you mean, like, render the... Yeah, it's difficult, but, but, because, it, because just... as well, a lot of the time, they have these mm. fake suicide vests on, don't yeah, they? Yeah. And so yeah. you can like, it's, well, oh, no, that's true. It's, 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 look, there's no easy answers. Though, by definition, there's no easy answers, are there? I think, yeah. I agree with you. In, in, in an ideal world, I think, you know, if you could bring them to justice and make them serve the rest of their lives in quite miserable conditions, that's probably what a lot of people would want, given that they often want to die anyway, don't they? Yeah. Which is why, why they're doing it. Why give them what they want? But, yeah. pff, you know, I, I think I've got to be on the, yeah. on the shoot first side, which is not something I would always think I'd say at 10... 10.20 in the morning on a Friday. But, mm. uh, lots, those days. lots of you still coming in. Uh, you know, Ian has said that from Oldham, if, if Labour are serious about law and order, they would have been tackling grooming gangs. I think that is a very important issue. Well, that's interesting, isn't it, as well? You know, it's all very well and good saying they want to bring swift justice and this, that and the other, but I can remember a mm. certain Labour Party MP, Sarah Champion, who spoke out yes. very vocally and, exactly. about grooming and gangs. And was demonised. And rather, was, and was, and was, and was incendiary demonized. for doing so. Yes, indeed. So, yeah. which one is it, Labour? Anyway. Mm.